Tonight, families sigh with some relief as the province fills a significant vacancy in pediatric care. Also, how animals are handling the heat and smoke and how you can keep your pets safe. Plus, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will travel to Montreal with two of their biggest weapons on the injured list. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Tuesday, July 23rd, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thanks for watching. It has felt like an endless wait for some families in our province. Last year, Saskatchewan's only pediatric gastroenterologist left. But now the province has recruited a new one and families are elated. Pratush Dayal reports. I'm so happy the doctor's coming from Edmonton. So I don't have to travel far away. Bye bye. Since birth, Blake Turnbull has needed the help of special doctors. The little girl was born with bladder and bowel issues and was referred to a gastroenterologist. The now five-year-old was on a six-year wait list when the province's only pediatric gastroenterologist left. It forced her and her family to travel from Regina to Edmonton for surgery last April. And then we had to go back a repeat of, I think, almost four to five times for the recovery, sometimes very emergently. Um, one time last year, we got back from Edmonton, and within six hours, we had to turn around and go back to Edmonton. <laughs> it's an expensive solution, costing the family thousands of dollars. Blake's mom, Sarah, says it left many families helpless. And it was scary. It was super scary for so many parents out there with children with these chronic conditions and being told that those services just aren't offered. The successful recruitment of Dr. Prasad. But now, some relief. The province has recruited a pediatric gastroenterologist from Edmonton, Dr. Robin Prasad. He starts October 1st, filling the vacancy left since May of 2023. The families in our province will now have access to specialized pediatric gastroenterology services much closer to home. And we know that many families have had to travel significant distances for these specialized services. We've Hindley says Dr. Prasad will also support the development of a comprehensive children's gastroenterology program for Saskatchewan. Prasad says he's aware of the challenges. Yes, there's been some troubled times and uh, hopefully as we move forward, we'd see the end of those troubled times. It's been tough. For families in rural areas, it's an even bigger relief. This family would travel from Good Spirit Lake near Yorkton to Saskatoon every two weeks. A seven-hour round trip for the son's scare. But actually having a GI doctor here and local is amazing. It reduces wait times, provides access for scoping in province significantly more than what there has been in the past. And just overall, it just provides great care for the children of our province. And while the families are happy to have support, they also want to make sure the SHA and the Ministry of Health ensure Dr. Prasad actually stays in Saskatchewan. Oh, I really hope that uh, the Minister of Health and the SHA is really, really giving this doctor whatever he wants. <laughs> like, give him whatever he wants. Um, like, give him the staff, give him the space. Just keep him here and get him to bring his friends. British Dayal, CBC News, Saskatoon. It's been a hot couple days inside St. Paul's Hospital in Saskatoon. Patients and staff suffered through it while a cooling system was repaired. In a statement, the Saskatchewan Health Authority says the cooling system required cleaning. There was also a power outage last Friday, and there is limited air intake when the air is so smoky. They say things do appear to be resolved now. The head of the union representing some hospital staff says maintenance and health care workers did a great job. Um, I think they were working under some tremendous pressure, both, you know, to make that fix, but they know what their colleagues are going through. And for the staff who kept providing patient care, I am just absolutely amazed uh, that they kept it up. They kept coming to work. They didn't drop the ball. Cape says management passed around popsicles and sports drinks to keep people cool. She admits it's not a great long-term solution. Cape says there needs to be a better plan for replacing aging infrastructure. One of Canada's iconic attractions is at the centre 
of a major firefight. Thousands of people have been ordered to leave Jasper. And it isn't the only fire forcing people to pack up and leave for safety. Stephanie Cram has a look at what's unfolded in the last 24 hours. This was the scene Tuesday morning about 20 minutes east of Jasper. Charred trees, smoke and signs of fire lingered. Monday night, shortly after 10 p.m., an emergency alert was announced. Residents fled, smoldering trees just meters away. With a fire burning south of the municipality, some residents went west to Valemount, B.C., others went north to Grand Prairie or east to Hinton, including Margot Bureska. Bit of a scary drive leaving, you know, it was, it was very apocalyptic in the sense of a lot of smoke coming in very fast. Highway 16 is closed east of Hinton, where helicopters could be seen gathering water. Provincial officials say that after weeks of dry, hot weather, conditions in the national park worsened. The past few weeks have been tough. While there is rain expected in parts of the province later this week, the forecast into the next week calls for more hot, dry weather, meaning we will likely have more hard days ahead of us. Jasper falls under Parks Canada, but the province says they've helped fight the fire. We've already provided support overnight from aircraft to staff to wildfire intelligence. And today we have firefighters and aircraft on standby that are ready to help in Jasper if needed. In addition to Jasper, there are currently another 170 active wildfires in Alberta's forest protection areas, 50 classified as out of control. This week's smoke cover seen as far east as Edmonton has calmed the wildfires. Now, firefighters in Jasper are bracing for the worst. Today, we are expecting a change in that fire behavior. We're preparing for challenging conditions today as a cold front moves in from BC and the winds are going to shift. Elsewhere, evacuation orders remain for Chippewan Lake, Jean Vier 194 of Chippewan Prairie First Nation, and the three communities of Little Red River Cree Nation. And an evacuation alert remains for the hamlet of Jean Vier. Stephanie Cram, CBC News, Edmonton. If you can't breathe well because of smoky weather, there's chances that your, pan your pet can't either. Combine that with the heat. We were wondering, how are animals faring? Ashwari Aduda has the answer. Rocket the raccoon at Saskatoon Zoo loves his cool treats. And he can sense a lot more with his hands than you'd think. They do a lot of searching through water for food and for things. Um, they have a lot of feeling almost like taste buds on their fingers so they can kind of taste what they're feeling and what they're going around. Some of the animals are doing wonderfully. They love it. The zebras are really, really excited about the heat. They love being out in this weather. Uh, some animals are a little less excited about it. The snow leopard doesn't really love this weather as much. Mitchell says they let animals choose if they want to be indoors, outside, or in the water. The bear has an indoor enclosure in the back that he, uh, both of them, Mistea and Coda, have the opportunity to go into uh, to get out of the heat. It's definitely chill, cooler back there and definitely a little uh, not as smoky back there. Uh, they also have their pool that they use a lot. We've had an increased number of calls, uh, particularly during the heat for still things, dogs being left in hot cars, um, situations like that, dogs without shelter. So under the act, people are responsible for providing adequate shelter and reasonable protection from injurious heat. Ferguson says if people are warned to stay inside, their animals should too. <laughs> For that reason, Sandy Walls hasn't walked her dog the last few days. Sometimes really early in the morning, if it's, if it's okay, like, and I'll, I'll check the network. And if it's, if it's a low risk, then I'll take him out literally just around the block. Other tips for keeping your pets safe? Make sure they have lots of water and shade. The best way to cool them down is naturally. Get them indoors, offer them some water. And if they're experiencing heat stress, you might notice excessive panting, lethargy, and drooling. If things don't improve, get them to a vet. Ashwari Aduda, CBC News, Saskatoon. Shovels are now in the ground to redevelop more social housing units in Regina. The Regina Housing Authority says construction will bring six new affordable family homes to the Regency Gardens neighborhood. The two-story homes will have four bedrooms and two bathrooms for larger families. They expect it to help lower wait times on the social housing wait list. We have about 400 people waiting for social housing and lots of applications coming in every day. Um, in terms of waiting for the large units, we have about 60 families waiting. 
Yes. Yeah. And we do have large units throughout the, the portfolio that come vacant, you know, and just regular, you know, as people move on. So this will help put a dent in it for sure. This is the second phase of this project. The first saw the redevelopment of several homes in the neighborhood. The homes are expected to be on the rental market in March. The CFL's top two teams, the Rough Riders and Alouettes, will meet for the first time on Thursday. And the Riders will have to take them on without two of their top weapons. Veteran running back A.J. Ouellette hasn't practiced all week and won't play. Coach Corey Mace admitted Ouellette is banged up and today's injury report reveals it's a hip issue. Frankie Hickson will start in his place. Star receiver Kean Schaefer-Baker is also out with a shoulder injury. The Riders on a short week are up against a 5-1 and Montreal squad that's coming off a bye week. They're very good up front, very good in the secondary and they're well coached so... Um... You know, we're gonna, that's why we're locking in on the details this week in the short week and um, showing up every single day until game day, ready to go. Um, they got a lot of good athletes on that side of the ball. Um, some really good players on offense as well. Um, so it's going to be a battle, and then, uh, we're looking forward to showing up and competing. You know, they got, they got Caleb, if that's who it is, um, or if it's Cody. Yeah, I don't think it's going to change the way the team's going to rally around the quarterback, so they're all going to play hard as ever for each other and we just we gotta be we gotta be ready to do that. The Alouettes have listed quarterback Cody Fajardo as doubtful for the game Thursday. He suffered a hamstring injury in the Owls week six loss to the Argos. He was replaced by backup quarterback Caleb Evans after leaving the game in the first half. Kickoff Thursday is at 530 in Montreal. It's starting to feel like we've seen nothing but cloudy days thanks to all that smoke, but the heat certainly tells a different story. There are all kinds of weather alerts and warnings all over the province. Ethan will have the scoop after the break. Stay with us. Two Saskatchewan brothers are facing fines for poaching a moose. David and Stephen Ostapiu pleaded guilty to breaking several wildlife laws. They have to pay $6,200 and are banned from hunting for a year. They got caught thanks to a YouTube video. Look at this guy. <laughs> I still can't even believe it's real. Throughout the video, one of the individuals is seen not wearing the required hunting clothing that, that's required when you're hunting big game in Saskatchewan. And that kind of key piece of, of evidence led the officer to kind of dig into who that individual was, um, if he held the appropriate licenses, and, and it turns out that um, in, in this case he didn't. Officers, uh, based, on, based on the video and, uh, and analyzing that video with a lot of local knowledge from the officers who were familiar with the area, in turn was able to locate the shell casings that were matched to to a firearm that was on scene. And a lot of times we will we will follow certain accounts and look at videos and um, just kind of an officer's keen eye in this in this instance that that picked up a, a potential violation which led to um, you know a subsequent lengthy investigation and and charges and fines uh, as a result. Shooting a moose without a valid license, um, using another person's license to cover off the animal that was taken providing false information to officers was, was part of, of that investigation as well. And unlawful possession of an untagged moose. The weather update is brought to you by Capital Ford Lincoln, proud partner of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Well, our weather specialist, Ethan Williams, joins me now. Illegal activities aside, it's weird to see snow <laughs> after it's been so hot. Oh, yeah. Doesn't that feel like a dream or maybe not a dream? Maybe not. A nightmare <laughs> down the road. Yeah, nothing like that today. Uh, of course, temperatures uh, very hot, especially in the southwest corner of the province. Darn near 40 degrees in places. That ridge of heat starting to build in. But outside of the ridge, look how quickly those temperatures drop off. Low 20s for some of the rest of us. Leader not reporting at the moment, but was, uh, did end up getting to 38.7 degrees today. That is very close to the July hot temperature record 
of 39. And it's also pretty close to the all time temperature record in that place of uh, 39.5. So yeah, some very intense heat. Not as much humidity uh, today though. And you see that in the southwest corner where temperatures and humidex values pretty much the same. We are seeing that a little bit now into southeastern Saskatchewan feeling into the low 30s there. And that is because the heat is uh, now starting to move eastward. This big ridge with that warm air uh, now uh, going to starting tomorrow move into places like Regina and Saskatoon and that is why all of south and central is now under a heat warning and that extends all the way up the western side of the province to the very northwestern corner around Uranium City. We overlay the uh, special uh, air quality statements and the air quality advisories on top of that and you can see there's actually been an improvement in south and central. Regina we're still under that. We thought we'd be in the clear today but it's actually us instead of Saskatoon dealing with uh, the smoke and that is of course uh, one step above that an air quality advisory is still in place in many sections of northern Saskatchewan. Change in the wind flow over the next couple of days means we should flush out that smoke still. But again, it's northern Saskatchewan still primarily going to be dealing with that. And winds could continue to be gusty. We've seen them gust uh, uh, strong at some times today. Again, tomorrow gusting 30 to 40 in uh, the southeast. And uh, our next system starts moving in Thursday, which could pick up those gusts again. So tomorrow, in advance of that, we do have the possibility of some showers and thunderstorms just skirting kind of the uh, just north of Regina tomorrow morning. Possibility of some severe storms in the Meadow Lake and Buffalo Narrows area tomorrow, but nothing uh, too substantial there uh, as far as an organized severe weather threat. It's Thursday though this cold front from this low pressure system brings some showers and storms through dies off pretty quickly though but that low pressure system going to pick up some moisture and that'll be dumping uh, some possibly substantial amounts of rain to northern Saskatchewan and Alberta helping the forest fire situation. We'll keep our fingers crossed there. It'll also drop temperatures which you'll see here in our seven day forecast because the next couple of days in Regina it's going to feel like 40 degrees so very warm and then that big drop off as we get into the weekend there before the heat restarts next week. Saskatoon you're a little bit closer to that center of low pressure so Friday Saturday will be quite windy outside of uh, that heat, which is still uh, going to be quite oppressive over the next couple days, Sam. All right. Thanks, Ethan. You're welcome. Well, daredevils can now fly over the rooftops of downtown Berlin thanks to Europe's highest swing. It's set up on top of a 35-story hotel, a dizzying 120 meters high. No thank you. The swing offers visitors the chance to take in the city from a whole new angle. We'll be back after the break. Earlier this month, a special ceremony was held in Regina to honor war brides. During that event, speakers said there were likely only two war brides left in Saskatchewan. Well, Shortly after that, CBC shared that story. War brides began to reach out to us. The real number is actually unknown, but those we've heard from say they want their stories to be known and remembered. Laura Sharpaletti has more. More wives and kiddies of Canadian servicemen are off on their adventurous trip to the land of opportunity across the sea. Among the thousands of war brides who boarded ships to Canada was 20-year-old Sylvia Power. She's now 98 years old, living in Saskatoon, and she still remembers how she fell in love with a Canadian soldier, Doug Power, in London in 1944. We felt very close during the two weeks he was there, and I was very sad when he left because I didn't know if I'd ever see him again. And um, we both felt that this was something special. It was all very romantic. Leaving England was difficult for power, but when she boarded the boat carrying war brides, she got a very special send-off. It was the first evening after the war that they were allowed to light the bonfires. And so we saw all these fires burning all along the coast until we got to the Atlantic. So all the girls were hanging over the rail and crying and remembering their childhood and saying goodbye to England. It was very emotional. Power is just one of approximately 48,000 women who moved to Canada after marrying Canadian servicemen during the wars. A pedestal dedicated to war brides was unveiled in Regina earlier this month, and during the ceremony, it was suggested that there were only two war brides left in Saskatchewan. 
That number didn't add up for Anna Lynn Sanch, who's with the Canadian War Brides and Families Association. I was surprised and befuddled because I know from experience that others have come out of the woodwork. I know that in many cases, some of them did not know about any of the Warbride associations because they didn't drive, their husbands weren't affiliated with the Legion, social media wasn't what it is nowadays. She also says some women didn't talk about the war, and since that ceremony, more war brides have contacted CBC with their stories. And for Lillian Wilton, it's quite the story. The year was 1942. The Second World War was in full swing. She was rationing food and helping the war effort. Then she met a handsome Canadian soldier while out dancing. I don't know, it would just click like that. Yeah, he was on a, a six-day leave. I don't know, we just hit it off and that was it. <laughs> In a matter of months, Wilton and the soldier, Alan, were married, and soon she and their two sons would leave everything behind to start a new life in Saskatchewan. The people were always very friendly, so I have no complaints. Canada's been very good to me. How's that? And I've enjoyed living here. Like Wilton, Sylvia Power doesn't regret starting a new life with her husband in Canada. He always said even to... His last days, he always said, it's just like a dream. If you'd never believe that it all came true. She hopes more war brides will share their stories before it's too late. Laura Sharpaletti, CBC News, Regina. And Ethan's back with one last look at your weather. It's probably not as sentimental. Uh, no, uh, it's warm though, I can tell you that, <laughs> and hazy. Uh, warm, well, warm, sentimental, same thing, there you go. 22 at midnight in Regina, still a little breezy. We're likely going to keep that haze around and uh, probably still lingering a bit tomorrow morning. Winds are going to be a little bit breezy in the morning. Those will start dying off as we get into the afternoon hours, but look at that, already feeling like 37 by noon. We likely hit 30 degrees, lots of sunshine if we get that uh, smoke cleared out of there. And very similar picture in Saskatoon. We get to tomorrow morning already at 23. Winds a little bit lighter, I think, for us in uh, the Bridge City. And then uh, again, Humidex values near 40 already uh, by the noon hour. Likely not just like this tomorrow, Sam, but probably Probably once again uh, on uh, Thursday as well. I had to think about what day was coming up there. Ew. Uh-huh, yeah. Ew. Said Thanks, it fast. Ethan. You bet. And uh, before we leave you tonight, after 50 years of asking for a community centre, Little Bone Reserve is finally celebrating the opening of one. The Chief Little Bone Community Centre officially opened with a ribbon cutting on July 19th. The reserve is south of Yorkton, under the Zagame Anishinaabek First Nation. The centre will be used for community gatherings like wedding ceremonies and funerals for its members. It will also have opportunities for healthcare services. I hope that um, this building will um, help the people of Littlebone to reclaim the history. Um, achieve a sense of justice for all they've been through historically and find their own path forward, make their own decisions, figure out where they want to go in the future. The $3.6 million project was funded entirely by the local community. It took 10 years of planning and six board members who worked toward building it. And community leaders have more plans for the future. They also want to build a playground, a ceremonial area and a picnic area outside the new community centre. Congrats to all involved. That is it for us tonight. For news anytime, you can head to cbc.ca slash sask. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel or download the CBC News app. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.